hey guys hey guys god bless you guys so i just wanted to come on here really quickly and speak about something that the lord placed in my heart the other day and hopefully this will encourage you in your walk of faith in your journey with the lord just as it has for me so this is what the lord plainly said to me he said that he did what Adam and Eve could not do, right? And it's so important to understand what that means because it gives us so much liberty in our spiritual walk of faith. I personally do not know what you're going through. I don't know your struggle. I don't know what you battle with spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. If you're going through some type of uh, sickness, disease, um, if you feel like you have no peace in your mind, if you feel like you have no self-control, if you feel like you're struggling to love, if you feel like you are, um, you know, you are just impatient, um, you don't know how to focus, um, what else? You are an aggressive person, um, you're violent, you are constantly angry, um, you don't know how to be kind, um, you don't have you don't know how to you prefer to receive, you don't like to give, you're not a giver, you just want to be in life just constantly receiving and receiving. You just want constant attention, constant, you know, it's just all about you. You're you're selfish, you're self-centered. Um, and these are all things, right, that we need to be working on because the spirit of the Lord is righteous, right? And it's all about morals. Sometimes we think that I don't know what people think that the Holy Spirit is. I feel like people think that the Holy Spirit is uh, Santa Claus, that anything that we pray for um, shall be given to us. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The word is right that Jesus did what Adam and Eve could not do. So God himself, God is spirit. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. God is whom created you and I. And he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins, correct? So that we can be saved. And Jesus Christ died in the cross so that we can be saved by what? Not just by grace. Not just because I'm dying for you guys and that's it and you guys are saved by grace. No. Is because he poured out his Holy Spirit. That is the grace. And sometimes we think that the grace is just him dying in the cross. No. Him dying in the cross allowed his Holy Spirit to be poured into our lives and allow us to grow. Allow us to develop ourselves in the world, in the word. To remove ourselves from the world. Amen. To remove ourselves from the world and give us the ability to rise higher. When the word righteousness and justice is described in the Bible, it means morals, high morals. Look up the word righteous. Look up the word justice. It's about doing what's right. It's about doing what's correct. It's not about you going to God and treating him like Santa Claus. It's not about you going to God and feeling like you got the bad end of the stick because nobody got the bad end of the stick like Yeshua, like Jesus Christ. Yet it was still God's will for his own son, his only begotten son, okay, to die for humanity. So when you understand that it is our job to also die in the flesh, in this world for God for humanity for yourself so that you can be saved and be the light for other people when you understand that that's the will of God that that's what Jesus came that that is our access to heaven that that is our guarantee uh, that our guarantee that we are going to spend eternity with God other than that nothing is guaranteed if you are walking in the flesh constantly 
um, doing whatever you want to do, treating people however you want to be, however you feel like they need to be treated, however you feel they deserve to be treated, and not following the second commandment, which is to love God and love people. Okay, you need to read scripture, you need to get back into the word, and you have to stop thinking that you're God. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ. There's a lot of people who call themselves believers, who call themselves Christians, um, that say that they are Christians, uh, but it's really just to get something. It's really just because they're sick. It's really just because they're financially struggling. It's just because they don't have a spouse. It's just because they're in a place that they don't want to be. It's just because um, they're angry that they don't have something um, that someone else has or that they desire. Maybe a baby, maybe a car, maybe something. Um, or maybe they're just, um, I don't know. I don't know. But there's so many reasons why people call themselves Christians. Yet they do not walk in the Holy Spirit of God. And according to, I believe, the book of Galatians chapter 5, there are nine fruits of the Spirit. And I want us to focus this week. Today is Sunday, July 10th, and it's 10 p.m., 10.08. Hopefully this video goes up tonight. Um, we need to focus on the fact that Jesus died so that we can have those nine fruits of the Spirit. Here trying to find Galatians 5. Let me go to it. Because I don't know if I remember all of the fruits of the Spirit. But let me try, right? It's love, patience, peace, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And there's two more. <laughs> there's two more. And I'm just super tired. I'm like running on like five hours of sleep and a whole week of just like working. So, you know, if I'm a little blood in this video. I am just tired. But I just want to for us to stay connected. Um, I know there's a few people that watch my videos. And, you know, I know that it's hard. I know that it's hard and it gets confusing and we get tempted to just go astray doing our own thing and going astray and taking our own thoughts and thinking that those things that we do and those thoughts that we have don't have repercussions. The body, the Bible says that we have to bring every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. And believe me, every thought that you have you can you can line it up to Galatians chapter 5 to know and see if you are thinking the right thoughts. And the only reason sometimes we think these bad thoughts and these negative thoughts and these unholy thoughts, ungodly thoughts, and we can't take them out is because you haven't replaced it with something righteous with something good and right here according to galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the holy spirit man in yeshua's name is love joy okay that's the one that i forgot long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control I forgot long suffering as well. And it's not that um that's not something that I practice, but you know, I obviously forgot the word. And my brothers and my sisters, what thoughts are in your head? Because I don't know if you heard the last video that I lo uh uploaded, but we are living in the end times. And the end times is not just about Oh my God, Jesus Christ is coming again. Oh my God, there's gays in the world. Oh my God, uh, pedophilia. No, no. It's about negative thoughts. That's about unholy thoughts. If you read the story of Noah in the book of Genesis, it says that God destroyed the world because the people were thinking evil thoughts continually. What are evil thoughts? Everything that goes against Galatians chapter 
5 verse 22 so let's go over that again right so it says the fruit of the spirit is love so what goes against love hate so if you have constant hate in your thought towards someone and you're not constantly forgiving them and you're not constantly putting it in the foot of the cross then you're living in the times of Samora and Gomorrah Samora and Gomorrah you're living in the times of Noah okay that's an evil spirit that's the antichrist spirit that is that's going to continue attacking and that is attacking today and will continue until the day and coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the next one is joy if you don't know how to get the joy of the Lord in your spirit, how to get into 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 God's presence, if you're constantly depressed, constantly down, you are walking under the spirit of the Antichrist. You're going against God's Holy Spirit. You are rejecting God's Holy Spirit because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So where is it that you're finding strength? If you don't have the joy of the Lord, then you're obviously finding some type of momentary strength, either in fornication, sex, drugs, alcohol, some type of um, pastime. I don't know what it is, but you need to figure it out. Say that much. The next one is peace. Okay. And I'm speaking to you guys the way I speak to myself, okay? This is the only way that I feel I could do this right now because this is very important. The next one is peace. What is peace? What goes against peace? Craziness. You're just constantly just not able to have that peace. And you know what? That's something that I struggled with. Why? Because I was mentally tormented. Because I was mentally and emotionally going through a lot in my life. And I need and still need to keep myself in check. Are you keeping yourself in check? Are you removing people and things and habits from your life that is causing you not to have the peace of the Lord? Not the way the world gives this momentary peace or this peace of self uh, gratification of me, 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 and I, I, I. No, it's about the peace of God, the shalom of God, the Holy Spirit of God. The next fruit of the Holy Spirit is long suffering. Are you sticking it out? Are you sticking it out in order and loving someone? Are you sticking it out and no matter how difficult it is in your current situation, you are willing to to suffer it, no suffer it knowing that God is going to be the rewarder in your life. Knowing that God is going to either get you out of that situation, give you favor in that situation or turn that situation around. But are you willing to stay at the feet of the cross are you willing to still seek god and not go and not leave him and not abandon him and not reject him and not handle things the way you want things to be handled okay are you the next one is kindness what's the opposite of kindness are you being rude are you being disrespectful are you being evil are you being scornful are you mocking people are you laughing at people are you uh checking up on people just to make fun of them are you uh, going towards people and disrespecting them? Think about it. What do you do with your friends? What do you do with your family members? What do you do with the, your children, your kids, the people around you, at your job? God sees it all. He sees it all. And we're living in the times of Noah, of Noah where people are thinking evil continually. And then we wonder why this world is cursed. And when, then we wonder why, corona, why God allowed coronavirus and why God didn't say, oh, wait a minute, uh-uh. There's a lot of things that we are going through that is simply because our unwillingness to walk in the Holy Spirit of God. Evil is increasing. God doesn't want it that way, but we all have free will. The next one is faithfulness. Are you faithful to God? Do you trust God? Another word to faithfulness, according to the Jewish Hebrew translation, is trust. Are you trusting God? Because it's one thing for you to have faith in your mind and say, okay, I have faith. But are you really holding on to him? Are you really trusting him? Because when you trust, you walk with that person. You let that person take care of things. You let go. You let go of the worry. You let go of the things that are giving you anxiety, that are giving you fear. And you trust in the Lord. The next one is gentleness. Are you gentle? Or are you aggressive? Are you abusive? Do you hit on your wife? 
Do you hit on your spouse? Do you hit on your children? Are you constantly yelling? Are you constantly angry? Think about it. I'm not there. I can see what I can't see what you do behind closed doors, but the Holy Spirit can. And it's time for us to change. It's time for the body of Christ to change. The next one is self-control. It's the last one. Do you have self-control? I'm working on self-control when it comes to my eating, when it comes to eating the wrong foods. And not even that, eating the right foods is going to help my condition to lose weight. Because just when you struggle with certain health conditions that don't allow you to lose weight, it makes it a hundred times worse. So I can get on a diet, I can do certain things, walk, exercise, and it just takes longer and more work to do it. It's not as easy as it was when I was younger for me to lose weight. But that doesn't mean that I have to abandon the Holy Spirit when it comes to my self-control and getting there. So that's just an example of self-control. But there's so many other examples where you can not have self-control. You know, are you, do you have self-control when it comes to your finances? Do you have self-control when it comes to your behavior? Do you have self-control when it comes to substances, addictions? Jesus did what Adam and Eve could not do so that you can obtain the ability to walk in that. So that you can obtain the ability to walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit and all those amazing abilities. Adam and Eve in the garden according to Genesis chapter 3, failed. They fell. But Jesus, Yeshua, was born and walked this earth and was tempted by the devil after 40 days of fasting in the desert and said no to every temptation that he was faced with. The enemy tempted him three times. He tempted Eve once and she failed. Jesus went all the way to the cross. He could have been tempted to be like, yo, I'm not dying for these people that are never going to change. There's a whole bunch of them that's not, they don't even care. They don't care how they treat people. They don't care what they're going through. They don't care about their condition. They don't care about changing. They don't care about getting back to that image and that likeness of God, that purity. They don't care. Because we were all born pure. We were all pure, born pure and innocent. But something along the way came in. The enemy was successful to come in along the way, just how he did to Adam and Eve, and remove that purity. He removed the purity of Adam and Eve through the knowledge of good and evil. There's some type of knowledge in your life of evil that is going against the good works, the good things that God is trying to do in your life. So I want to encourage you to trust in the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to take this week to trust enough that it doesn't matter the negative thoughts. It doesn't matter how dark, how scary, how disgusting you think your mind is, how disgusting you think your heart is. Jesus died for you and I to get ourselves together. We have access to the throne room of heaven because of Yeshua, because he successfully did it, because there was no sin found in him. There was no sin, no sin. From the minute he was born until the minute he died, he was pure, he was perfect, and he still is because he resurrected on the third day and he's alive. And he wants to be alive in you. He wants to be alive in us. And it's your time to grow. It's your time to get better. Let's make this world a better place. And it starts with you. It starts with me. And our ability to be faithful and long-suffering. 
that despite of the difficulties, despite of the sufferings that we are suffering, that seem long, that seem like, wow, when is this going to be over? But that ability to continue, that perseverance gives us the endurance, the ability to keep going despite of the situation. And that's what brings glory and honor to God. That is the purpose of God, to continue going. Sometimes we wonder, why is this happening to me? Why does this, why am I going through this? Why this doesn't stop? But God wants you to be filled with him that it, that so much that it doesn't matter if those things don't stop. His Holy Spirit resides in you and you're able to walk with your head lifted up high and you're able to walk happy and in the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord that is part of the fruit of the Spirit of God that we just read. Those are the things, that is the thing that God is looking for. for. And when we tap into that and we tap and we do the things, the first former things that God is telling us to do from the beginning of time, Then he takes us from that place to another place. We go from glory to glory. We find ourselves that God, we find God coming into our situation and changing things around. If he can't change the situation, he's definitely going to change you. And if you change, your environment changes as well. It is impossible for you to carry so much of God's presence and things not change in your life. It might take time. It might take some time, but things definitely do change. And I just wanted to share that because I'm so happy. I'm so happy and I'm so blessed to have grown so much. And there's times where I feel so weak and feel like giving up. But God is good and he's faithful. And those are the times where I just have learned to just let it go and give it to him. Because if I take it, I'm going to ruin my life. And one thing that I'm not doing anymore is ruining my life because of people, because of my desperation for things, because my need for things. You know, there's so many reasons. It's not just one. There are so many reasons that the enemy comes in and tries to make you feel like you need to give up, like you need to give up hope, um, like you need to give up that joy, like you need to give up on loving, like you need to give up on being faithful, like you need to give up and being patient, like you need to give up and ha- and, and, and having peace. Uh-uh. We need to obtain those that peace. We need to obtain all those things because those are the things that God is looking for. And sometimes we wonder why we're we not blessed. Why are we not going to the next level? Why don't I? Why am I not elevating like this other person? Because we are living in a society where where people love to compare themselves with other people and act like they don't have the amazing things that God has gifted us, gifted us with. God has gifted every single person that believes in him with his Holy Spirit. And not only that, but God says that in the end times, he's going to pour his Holy Spirit upon the whole world. So let that be an awakening for you to know that if God is going to pour his Holy Spirit in the entire world, that if God is going to start ministering to and speaking and touching people that don't even congregate, that don't even have never f- have yet to place their feet in a temple, in a congregation, in a church, let that be an awakening for you to grab hold of God's word, to grab hold of God's Holy Spirit and do something with it. Stop waiting for somebody to come and do it for you. Stop being a copycat. Stop doing things because other people are doing it. Do things because the Holy Spirit is doing it. Oh, the Holy Spirit is loving? I'm going to love too. Oh, the Holy Spirit has joy? I'm going to have joy too. Oh, the Holy Spirit is kind? I'm going to be kind too. Oh, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, has peace? I'm going to have peace too. Oh, the Holy Spirit has patience. I'm going to have patience too. Oh, the Holy Spirit likes to do good things and not evil things. I'm going to do good things too. Oh, the Holy Spirit is faithful. He's not unfaithful. I'm going to be faithful too. Oh, the Holy Spirit is gentle. I'm going to be gentle too. Oh, the Holy Spirit has self-control. I'm going to have self-control too. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be 
like God. I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be made in his image and in his likeness. And that's the way we should be like God. Not that we are trying to be like God and, you know, trying to have superpowers and having control over people and doing obnoxious, selfish things that make you feel like you're a God, like you're superior and you're above people. No. No. We should be like God, that we are above the hot mess that we did yesterday. We are above our past, our past mistakes. We are above and beyond that. We don't live there no more. We're doing greater things. We're doing greater things in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. So I hope this blessed you. And I hope that you have a blessed week. And take the time to read Galatians chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 3. Because that's what we are going to be talking on my YouTube page. I think that those two chapters are the most important chapters that you will ever read in your entire life. <laughs> God bless you.